Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So this week's problem of the week is a DIY skimmer stand. And judging by the number of videos out there, lots of people have this problem. For my particular skimmer, the Bubble Magus Curve A5, it's said that it does best in 7.9 to 8 inches of water. They're very specific about this, and I don't know why, because right now it's in 8 inches of water, and it really is not doing well. But to get it to that 8 inches of water, we needed to raise it up by somewhere around 3 inches. And to that end, we went to the dollar store and picked up these two pot stands and a silicone mat to keep it in place on the bottom because of the bottom being glass and we thought it might be slippery. These pot stands are in X shape, which is really an important consideration as I'll explain later. Here's the silicone mat cut to size to act as a base. The pot stands were glued together point to point and a little bit of each arm was snapped off to cut them down to size so it wouldn't take up so much space in the sump. And then we took some extra pieces of silicone and put them on top of each leg to give something for the skimmer legs to actually sit on. And here's what that looks like. And here's why it was important that the stand be shaped like an X. This is the adjustment for the outflow of water from the skimmer body. And that knob turns those red gears at the bottom. And if those gears are resting against anything, they won't be able to move freely. So this X shape allows the legs to rest on something while allowing space for the gears to move. The measurement from the glass to the bottom of the legs on top of the stand is almost exactly three inches. The next test was to fill the sump with water. And unfortunately, I have no footage of that. And I say unfortunately, because the minute there was water in here, everything lifted up and started floating away. That silicone is buoyant. But it wasn't completely back to the drawing board. Version 1 had two problems. The first problem was keeping the legs of the skimmer in place on the arms of the stand. The second problem was keeping the whole unit itself stuck to the glass at the bottom. So we added these suction cups and they worked really, really well. And yeah, the suction cups worked so well that the top came completely away from the bottom the first time we tried to pull it off the glass. So we re-glued all of the points and then added these tie wraps to hold the two pieces together. One further minor but important aspect of this is that the legs of the skimmer on the bottom of the skimmer plate do not form a square. If anything, they form a very slight rectangle and even that rectangle is slightly skewed. So we had to put these nylon washers in place to match the legs. So here it is in the sump. It works really well. We've taken it out and put it back several times. Very easy to line up the skimmer legs where they need to be. However, turning it on again, this is still happening. Here we are, four weeks the skimmer's been running and it's still overflowing. I did some research and decided that it might be worth trying to raise the skimmer up a little higher. <laughs> so here we go again. I was really happy with the way this X-shaped design worked and decided it was best to stick with it and see if we could find a way to raise up the skimmer by about an inch. So we took some PEX pipe and these pieces, there are four of them, are cut to about an inch long and the idea here is to glue one on top of each washer and then insert the legs that are on the bottom of the skimmer plate into the top of each one. And here's what it looks like with the little pieces of PEX pipe glued on top of each washer. So we'll leave this to dry overnight and cure a little bit and then test it out tomorrow. And check it out. The four legs fit into the four tubes perfectly. Everything's in the sump, it's all plugged in, and we're ready to test it out. I'm really hoping it doesn't keep overflowing because I really don't know what I'm gonna do next. So I've turned the skimmer on. Here come the bubbles, let's see what happens. And guess what? It doesn't look any better than it did before. It is still gonna overflow. So you can imagine how frustrated I was getting by this point. 
and just in order to keep the skimmer running and try to generate some foam and pull some gunk out of the water I set it up so that the drain hose was draining out into the tank and I put a filter over the end of it I just took a filter pad and split it down the middle and slid the hose in just to try and catch anything organic that might get caught up in a filter like that which isn't going to be much but I thought it might help and at this stage I'm really wondering what I should do next so I went back to the drawing board went on to my trusty friend Google and did some more reading well I just happened to find a review on the Marine Depot website from someone who had this same issue with overflow although in his case it lasted a couple of days he said he took the supplied air valve and inserted it into the air intake and adjusted the screw and it solved the problem. And there you go. This was not supplied with my skimmer. I found this in our drawer of stuff. And this solved the issue. I was able to turn this little valve and control the amount of air and stop the overflowing and it actually started running like a skimmer should run. So what happened next has made me want to do a refrant. I emailed the distributor immediately as soon as I fixed the problem with the air valve and realized that that part was not supplied with my skimmer to let him know what had happened and how I fixed the problem. His response was that you should never recycle overflow back into your tank. Well, duh, I know that. It defeats the purpose of the skimmer. Yes, I agree with that. And he claimed that this part had never ever in all the thousands of units they've supplied had this part ever been supplied and in fact the manufacturer recommended against any type of restriction on the air intake because it might affect uh, the needle wheel down the road. Um, I'm flabbergasted by this because it's such a simple fix and it did fix what was going on here. Uh, second thing was that I should have been draining this overflow outside my tank and disposing of it. Well the rate at which this was overflowing I guarantee I would have been replacing 30 gallons of water every couple of days to keep up with it. Who does this for four weeks? Really, who? And that brings up another point. He said to me in an email that four weeks is about right for the amount of time it should take to break in a skimmer. Four weeks. Seriously? The advice to remove this water might apply in a case of someone where they maybe had this overflow for a day or even a couple of hours like some people have written about four weeks come on seriously that's just not even plausible another side effect of this was the mess that was made of the inside of my sump cabinet there was salt creep and salt spray everywhere I cleaned it up a number of times and finally I just left it alone because it was pointless Today, after I finally solved the problem, I went back at it again and got it nice and clean. So would I recommend this skimmer to anyone? No, not after this. Find another one that doesn't have a supposed four week break in period. You'll be much happier. So thanks for listening to my rant. This has not been a good experience. And from here on in, I'm hoping the skimmer works the way it's supposed to, to keep the tank nice and clean and healthy. Mm -hmm.